Hello and welcome to Inside the Women of Denver, where we talk to local leaders about their successes, failures, and lessons learned on the journey to success. I'm Crystal Covington, and I am here with Helene Kwong, a serial entrepreneur whose passion for supporting small businesses shows in every action she takes. When I ran across her Ignite Denver talk on YouTube, I really connected with her story of growing up as a first-generation Chinese-American and facing the stereotypes of her cultural background. What's really cool about her is that she has such an amazing perspective on life and business, but she's extremely modest, so you get to find out more as you get beneath the layers. <laughs> <laughs> Helene, I'm so excited to have you on the show. I'm excited to be on the show, although nervous. <laughs> <laughs> You've been in front of huge crowds. I know. <laughs> so you are definitely more of a pro than me. <laughs> so I know your business background began back with your family's restaurant. Mm -hmm. um, tell me about some of the experiences that you had with them and how do you bring those into your life today? Well, so growing up, I obviously, you know, as a kid, you don't, I didn't quite understand the whole concept of running business. But, you know, I learned from my parents the whole, like, you know, hard work, making sure that, you know, you treat people nicely and in general, like, just knowing that you're always, I guess in many ways, like, what, from my parents' point of view, the customer is almost always right. Yeah. Even though they might not always be right, but it's just like, you know, there was no need for my parents to be, like, arguing about, like, oh, this food was actually good, blah, blah, blah. Like, people, some people would send back plates of food, even though they, didn't, they barely touched it and stuff, but yeah. they always just be like, just do the right thing and you know in general that and also just learning from like how to like set up the whole like how to start everything out in yes. the restaurant every day and then just watching my parents like work really fast really hard too but really fast and when like watching my other siblings too like help out and stuff and I also helped out like it just definitely gave me a lot a big perspective on like you know running a business is hard but also too just like working from a young age it's like okay you know you got to learn, how, you got to earn your way in many ways. Yes. Yeah, I run into a lot of entrepreneurs and, you know, no diss on new entrepreneurs, of course, but they often come up with, uh, you know, we've got all these things out in the media that say, oh, you just have to think it and you can, you can have it, you know, and there's all these advertisements saying business is easy, six million dollars in six days, you know, yeah. all of these things make you, make it look like it's easy to start making money in a business, but your education early on you know, taught you the hard work and pounded it into you. Yeah, definitely. And it's just, yeah, like pretty much from a young age, I, kn I knew that like hard work was part of, you know, making your way and being successful. I mean, like just watching my older brother and he, you know, he's, a, he's the first child of the five of us and he did really well in school. Then he got accepted into Harvard. Wow. Our parents at that point were like, you know, our restaurant was okay, the business was okay. But like, they were just like, just go. You'll never have this chance again. Yeah. And also too, like in general, like that's a big deal. So he went and like basically like my brother has worked very hard into like basically being the first child of the five of us, like graduate college, but also then he got a really good job in New York and he's still there, And but he's worked really hard for it. And just like seeing him and of course our parents, but all of my other siblings too, it's just like, we all know the working hard is definitely something that you need to do in order to succeed in whatever you have planned for your life. Yeah. So do you feel like your family was a great mentorship for you in building your business? Your Her business is called Hashtagitude. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, I would say with my first business experience, because so my first business was called Tau Pivot, helping international students with getting jobs or internships in the U.S. And with that, I was a lot more, I guess, naive in many ways, mm -hmm. kind of, you know, put that stuff out the window of like what I learned from childhood. And I was like, oh, Running business is easy, but then I learned, you know, <laughs> again, it's like, it's tough. But I feel my, my family and my parents especially have definitely helped mentor me to like, basically need, like, if you fail once, well, you get to just get up and do it again, or not yeah. the same way, of course, but like get up and try again and see what works. And actually it took a while for me to actually tell them about like, hashtagitude because I was kind of nervous about, you know, is this gonna actually work? Cause this is my third yeah. business. And it's just like, I, want to make sure that it works before I tell them because I was so excited when I started Tal Pivot that I told them the first day and then like when I left <laughs> school like I told them like I already have one client and that worked out fine but like still like I got too excited and then when I shut down I felt like really ashamed. Oh. <laughs> yeah. But you you went through it and this is the kind of the, these are the hard lessons that people have to learn and yeah. 
I realize, you know, the more I start learning about the entrepreneurial journey, mm -hmm. there's so many people that have had failures in the past, and you don't know about that because you go, oh, they look so yeah. successful right now. I know. <laughs> yeah, they see you on the Ignite stage, and they're like, oh, she's great, <laughs> she's perfect. Nothing probably ever has ever happened to her that she didn't like. Ha ha ha. Only that were true. <laughs> So what were some of the best lessons that you've learned that from your failures in the past that have helped you, that are helping you in your business today? Well, I think one of the big things, I mean, it comes down to the money part. Like with my first business, I was putting my money in places where I felt like was, I didn't quite need to put them there yet. Like I, I thought I needed an office. So mm -hmm. I like got a little space, $600 a month. I could not Ooh. afford it at that point, but I was like, I need an office to be official, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you know, I've, that's one big thing, and then just other things that I invested in that I was just not definitely, you know, it definitely was not meant for that moment. Like I yeah. should have just started small and just been like, okay, you know, is this really good? Is this, you know, is it actually gonna help me? And instead of just collecting all these e-courses and be like, okay, I'll learn them and I'll put them aside and yeah. never look at them again. <laughs> so that's definitely one thing that I've learned that is the biggest lesson from my first business. Yeah. So what do you feel that, you know, drives you every single day? I mean, being an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. it's, you know, you don't have an office to go to, you don't have a boss to report to. So mm -hmm. how do you keep yourself motivated and sustain that energy? Um, I feel like just the fact that I enjoy, you know, I enjoy my, my profession. I enjoy marketing, I enjoy social media marketing, digital marketing, and it just helps to keep me motivated. And like, I know too, like one of my biggest life goals is to give back financially to my parents. Like as a cultural thing, like in the Chinese culture, children are supposed to give, like help support parents into the retirement anyway. Um, my parents aren't requiring that of, of all of us, <laughs> but like, I just feel like of all the times they've helped me financially, yeah. especially, but of course, you know, emotionally all that stuff, but financially I'm just like, I feel like I want to give back to them. And that's, I, I think that's one of the main drivers for me too. It's just like, I want to make this succeed, you know, be really big be able to finally give them give money back to them instead of them sending me like bi-monthly like stipends here and there yeah. and stuff. I'm like, I I just feel like I'm 31, I need to be like sending them money already because my brother was already sending them money early on. So. Yeah, oh good <laughs> stuff. Know? I love that you want to take care of your family. Yeah. That is a beautiful driver. <laughs> I mean, like I said, it's been ingrained in me from childhood and yeah. just from the culture. But. So you talked a little bit about your passion, so mm -hmm. I want to go there, you know, what is so amazing about social media. I know that there's people on both sides of the fence. Some people are like, I hate that thing. It moves too fast. There's too <laughs> much information, too many people posting. What is this? And then there's folks like you that are like, oh my God, this is this magical world. Mm -hmm. And for you, I'm sure it's probably the magical world piece. <laughs> you know, what, what makes it magical for you? What is something that is special about social media that engages you? I feel like, I definitely like the part of it evolving, although it can be frustrating too, because then I'm like, okay, I have to relearn all that, or Facebook change their algorithm again, oh, I have to go do this. But um, the magical part about social media and then just putting it in with marketing is like, it combines, it still combines cre creativity to where like, I'm also a very creative person. I like to draw, and when I was a kid, I, I actually drew these little advertisements and stuff. <laughs> you remember those Got Milk commercials? Yes. Or even those like, yeah, yeah advertisements, print ads? I drew one of those print ads for myself because I was like, I really like it. I bought Aww. the book and everything. <laughs> but like, so I've been like, you know, I draw, I draw, I write, sto I write novels. So like, I wow, also, I didn't know that. I do a lot of creative things to where like I feel like social media plus marketing like that kind of like mixes the passions together because like the business side too. I think like running a business that also like gets me going. Yeah. So what's your favorite social site? I have to say Twitter because I'm always on Twitter, but you know, recently people have been saying like, oh, it might be dying, and I'm like, no, don't no. say that. <laughs> you know, I, know, I, know. <laughs> I love Twitter. I know. I, I, I love it for like the fact that you can just easily network compared to the other sites. You can talk to people. Yeah. There are people actually on Twitter. So if you've never used Twitter, <laughs> you need to try it one time, okay? I, for the first month I joined Twitter, I made $300. Whoa. off of <laughs> winning contests because oh, I yeah. got so into it. I was like, oh, there's a hashtag this? Okay, yeah. I'm going to do it. It would be like send your 
pick, submit a picture and you can win $100. Uh -huh. I won the 100 bucks. I'm like, oh my God, let me do this again. And then I won 200 from like nice. car to go or something. <laughs> yeah, I won, I actually, yeah, I've won contests too through Twitter. I actually have won conference passes and stuff. So uh. like, that was definitely a big deal back in, well, not big deal, but it's still a big deal now. But 2013, I won like two or three conference passes. Wow. From just being on there when they had a contest. And I was like, here I am. And then I was like, won it. <laughs> So yeah, definitely. I like that part about Twitter, but I like you know the chats and just like it's definitely good with like networking at conferences, especially. Yeah. Because once you're there, then you're like, who's here? Use the hashtag, and then people are like, oh, I'm here. Let's meet up. And yeah, and you've done tweeting live tweeting events. Oh my God, that's some serious business. <laughs> yeah, I sit there and I usually have like these wrist braces on, and I'm like. <laughs> oh my yeah. gosh! Yeah, let's, like people like wonder if something's wrong with me. They're like, "Are you okay?" I'm like, "No, I'm just it's per, it's to protect my wrist, basically." <laughs> but yeah. Oh my gosh! <laughs> wow, I, I didn't have that picture in my head. Now it's very visual. Yeah. What it takes. So this is what it takes. Okay, to win in the hashtag game. <laughs> yeah, actually, at one conference, I was so, tweeting so much that. P the other conference attendees were like, are you a real person or are you a robot? <laughs> <laughs> they thought I was, I was like a bot, like auto-tweeting, all that stuff. Oh. I was like, I'm real. You can come meet me over here. <laughs> <laughs> I remember you did, um, you did a Twitter chat one time about hashtags, mm -hmm. and I learned so much. Mm -hmm. You know, I started using hashtags after that um, Twitter chat. So mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about how hashtags work. I'm sure there's so many people, I mean, there's so much people can learn about mm -hmm. social media, but I feel like we cannot leave this show mm -hmm. without giving a couple social media tips. Okay. So what is a hashtag, first of all, and what is one major benefit of using them? So a hashtag is more or less kind of how, uh, like a keyword. Like, you know, on Google, you Google a term. So a hashtag is basically that. And the benefit of using hashtags, especially on Twitter and Instagram, there are some other websites that you probably shouldn't use them on, or, or they're, they're not supported on. But like the benefit of that is that you get found more easily, especially with the subject matter you're using the hashtag on. And then also, too, then you, you, with, the, with being found, then you get engagement. So people might reshare or comment or like, you know, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So it definitely helps with that. And also, too, it just shows to your, especially in that hashtag, you're a subject matter expert of that category. Person, yeah. you know, kind of. <laughs> I've used hashtags before and then had people put me in a list for yeah. whatever that is automatically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, some people have like um, automation set up to where like anyone who uses that hashtag gets put on the list. Okay. Yeah, so like if, for instance, if you're kind of, if you're attending a conference anytime soon, someone will probably set up an automation to basically whoever uses that hashtag, they're going to be put on that list. Uh. You know, even if you're not actually there, because my friend, I had an automation set up and I was tweeting at her and she was at the conference and then I got added to her list. I'm like, okay, you know, I'm like, I just used the hashtag because she was there, but I'm like, like I'm not there, but okay. <laughs> you know? So what's one other, what's one of your favorite tips that you like to tell people about social media for business use? For business use, well, I guess this is the thing that I actually came up with in only in the past couple of weeks, but Really, social media and the marketing part behind it boils down to three things, and it's three C's, conveniently. <laughs> content, which can also mean keywords, consistency, and community. So basically, like the content part, building the keywords, building the foundation, like that's the foundation, yeah. Then staying consistent, like posting how many times per week, per day, et cetera. Then community, if you're not engaging with people, like if you're not actually like having the conversations, if you're just yeah. broadcasting, you're not building the community. Then you're not getting people to like buy from you or whatnot, especially if you're a business. So yeah. those three things I feel like are very important. <laughs> yeah, those conversations are key. I've actually gotten people to um, visit my business and buy from me from Twitter just mm -hmm. by having a conversation and yeah. inviting them. Hey, you know, would you check out my business? Yeah. And they'll they'll really do it, you know, because this is real people having real conversations, and a lot of times they're live yeah. on there. Yeah, and it's pretty much like you know you can't go. I mean, I guess you can go backwards, but like basically, if you come up and be all like salesy right off the bat, then people of are going to be turned yeah. off, you know. So you have to say hello first. Yeah, say hello, <laughs> and actually like build a rapport, and then you can be like, do you want to join my mailing list, or do you want my you know the service, or do you want to join my workshop or something like? You know, you gotta build that relationship first. Yeah. And I get, feel like when people get on social media, they forget that because they're like, "Oh, it's so easy. It's an easy, quick fix, and I just it's free." So I just put it out. Oops. Sorry. <laughs> 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 what 
but yeah. <laughs> All right, so what's the one thing that you want to make sure that you leave people with? Um, I mean, I was to say, like, if you're starting a business, like, definitely make sure that you do a do more research than you think is necessary and like in terms of like what kind of services to invest in early on just be a little more picky than I was because because <laughs> I, I definitely feel like oh, if I hadn't put money into that and that I would have a little more money right now but I'm making more money anyway but you know from the first business it was just tough to like see those see that happen yeah. and just learn from that mistake but now for viewers you don't have to do that mistake <laughs> You heard it right here. You do not have to make the same mistakes. <laughs> Save your money. Make good decisions with your finances. Yes. <laughs> Go to an accountant or somebody you know, yes. to ask, what are the things that I should be spending my money on? And um, you know, how do I make sure I even tabulate this? So that's where I failed. My first failure was I didn't know how to manage money, and it just went out the door. Uh -oh. And I was like, where did it go? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, well. There it went, like, just like the air. <laughs> yeah, big money lessons here, okay? Yep. <laughs> well, thank you so much for sharing so much about your history and some of those really awesome social media tips. Of course. <laughs> I'm happy to be here. Yeah, well, thank you so much. Well, thank you so much for watching Inside the Women of Denver with me, Crystal Covington, and our guest, Helene Kwong. I can't wait to see you again next time, and always remember that you deserve to be seen, heard, and known.